Well, hello and welcome. If you've visited my YouTube channel previously, you'll know that um, my five videos on my Hauptwerk virtual organ uh, have been very popular indeed. And it's very gratifying because I've had so many very pleasant emails from people um, telling me how helpful they found the videos and how in many, many cases it's inspired them to create their own help virtual organ console. So um, after all that, uh, and also after helping quite a few people locally to build their help work consoles, I decided that I would put all that down, all that material down on paper in the form of a book. And that's what I've done. And this is the book. It's, it's entitled All About Help Work the virtual pipe organ um, and uh, I thought it would be helpful just to have a quick look through so that people could see in advance what they'd be getting uh, when they get the book. The front cover here is actually a representation of the Hauptwerk screen with four of the very very good quality organs that are available. Um, this one is the Haverhill Old Independent Chapel in Suffolk in England this one is the Henry Willis um, organ from uh, Hereford Cathedral, uh, also in England. This one is the magnificent organ in the Basilica in Estegom in Hungary, uh, with a magnificent acoustic reproduced in the virtual organ. And this is in the Palace of Arts in Budapest, also in Hungary. Um, if we have a look through here, we'll see what we've got. The book starts by explaining uh, about organ technology before Hauptwerk came along. Organ technology, that is, in this instance, apart from pipe organs. So we actually start with reed organs and how they work. And we look at the Hammond organ, the tone wheel organ. We have a look at a really interesting instrument um, from the 1960s and 70s called the Mellotron. The interesting thing is that when you learn about Hauptwerk, this is the closest instrument, really, to Hauptwerk because this used recorded samples, but they were analogue samples on tape. Uh, and when you press the key, uh, it actually uh, produced um, the notes from tape, which rolled over the recording heads. Then we discuss uh, synthesizers. That's a Mini Moog synthesizer, or a Mini Moog, as we should really pronounce it. So it then, this chapter then finishes with where does Hauptwerk fit in? Because Hauptwerk is not an electronic organ. That's the first thing to say. Uh, it is plainly not a tone wheel, Hammond style organ. Uh, it's not a reed organ. Also, uh, it's not really, uh, it's not a synthesised organ in any sense. And nor is it really truly a, a digital organ in the conventional sense. Because we call Hauptwerk, we, we say that it, it works with samples, but they're not really samples. Because to my mind, a sample is a small section of something which is used to represent the whole. Well, Hauptwerk doesn't use a small section. It uses full-bodied recordings of every pipe in the organ. And in fact, it more, usually uses more than one recording per pipe. But that's all explained in the book, so there we are, we'll leave it at that. Everybody who has a Hauptwerk or builds a Hauptwerk pipe organ, virtual pipe organ, needs to understand a little bit, well, quite a lot, about real pipe organs. Because if you can't play, or, well, I'm not saying if you can't play a real pipe organ, you'll never play a Hauptwerk. If you don't understand real pipe organs, you won't know how to get the best out of a Hauptwerk virtual pipe organ. So I drew this diagram there to explain how um, pipe organs work. We go through the various parts of a pipe organ. There's an image of some of the pipes. Um, there's all kinds of detail in the book which I won't bore you with now. We look at the kinds of pipes that you encounter. Diapason and flutes and reeds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then um, this is a little, this picture here uh, is a picture taken in fact in St Mary Redcliffe Church in Bristol. And these are the pedal pipes, and these are 32 foot long. 
and this is just for, to get you a scale. Because the pipes in a pipe organ can be anything from three quarters of an inch up to 34 feet long, massive. There's a little section here which I think is very interesting and you don't often encounter this in books about organs or in books about acoustics and sound generally. It explains why in a pipe you get what we call harmonics where when you play one note like a C, middle C, right, you also get the C above it which is how this vibrates with two cycles, two peaks and two troughs in the space of the pipe as well as just one. And that's an octave above. But you also get the G above that, where you've got three vibrations fitting into the pipe. And so on. And of course, the reason why you get these precise whole number of waves fitting into the pipe is because they reinforce each other. If they were fractional parts of a wave, they would, dis they would um, cancel each other out. So it's only the ones that support each other that appear. This is really important in pipe organs because um, when you play a pipe organ, you use things called mutation stops, which actually are harmonics of the fundamental pitch of the pipe. However, I can't go on any longer because if I do, this video will take too long to make. These are the parts of a classical pipe organ. Um, and then we look at theatre organs or cinema organs, as they um, sometimes called. And this chappy, Robert Hope Jones, um, who's... Um, was uh, quite a famous English organ builder who went over to the States to work for Wurlitzer, is responsible really for many of the innovations uh, that came about when the theatre organ or cinema organ or unit unit organ, as it's often called, um, was, was created. And I, again, I won't go into the details, but it explains to you exactly how a theatre organ is different from a um, conventional classical organ. So um, we, we, we talk about all kinds of things to do with playing the pipe organ because playing the virtual pipe organ is just the same as playing a virtual or uh, playing a real pipe organ in the sense that you have keyboards and pedal boards, you have swell pedals, crescendo pedals, you have organ divisions, the great organ, the choir organ, the solo organ and other divisions as well. And then you have to register by pulling the appropriate stops to get the sound that you want. And I make some kind of attempt to explain how you do that. Then we start, we're ready now to start on Hauptwerk itself. Now, we must play, pay full credit here to Martin Died, who um, uh, wrote uh, the, um, the, ha the Hauptwerk programme uh, in the very early 2000s, 2002, 2003. Because... Those of us who play a virtual pipe organ, we all have yearned to have a real pipe organ maybe at home or to have unlimited access to a real pipe organ. And Martin is the chap who gave us that. So we have to give him full credit for that. It was his company, Crumhorn Labs, that was initially selling the, uh, the product. Um, he then um, sold the, uh, the software rights to uh, Milan. Well, I say Milan, but some people say Milan. I don't know. Brett Milan's company in um, in Indiana in the U USA, um, Milan or Milan Digital Audio, and they now own the rights and market the software. So it tells you how to get hold of the Hauptwerk, which you can get completely free of charge. It's important to realise that. You can run Hauptwerk completely legally, free of charge. Um, but of course, it's got some restrictions. In fact, a lot of restrictions if you use the free version. Um, you really need to have the advanced version if you're a serious player. But one of the beauties about Hauptwerk is you can start small and build up increasingly as you um, develop your skills in playing and as you develop your understanding in the, the, uh, of, of the organ. Um, OK, then we talk about sample sets. And here I'll just take the opportunity to mention two kinds of sample set, dry and wet. If an organ is recorded dry, it means it's recorded with no acoustic re in relation to where the organ is actually situated. So there's no reverberation and there's very little resonance. Um, when an organ is recorded wet, not only is the sound of the pipe recorded, but also the reverberation of the acoustic in which the organ is situated is recorded as well. And if you play an organ at home, this is one of the beauties of Hauptwerk because you get the cathedral acoustics or the concert hall acoustics. 
Um, and it's most remarkable if you've never heard it. It's really worth hearing because if you play Hereford Cathedral, Salisbury Cathedral, uh, many, all the cathedrals in France, there are lots of organs recorded, of famous organs in France, and you have the acoustic of the organ. Um, then I explain to you uh, how the sample set is put together, and then we tackle one little issue which is very important, um, which is what's called polyphony. Polyphony is the number of uh, audio streams, that is the number of sounds, that you can play simultaneously on your organ. And um, it's important to realise that when an organist plays the organ, he pulls all these stops, and each one of these stops makes at least one pipe play when you press a key. So if you pull 10 stops, you're going to get 10 pipes. And sometimes an organ, a, a stop on the organ can actually make many more than one pipe play. It can make six pipes play simultaneously. So if you pull, certain, say, 10 ordinary stops and then one of these special stops called mixtures, you might end up with 16 pipes being played from one finger. So 10 fingers equals 60 pipes. Um, and you've also got your feet to consider as well. And then you can couple the, the keyboard manuals together so that you can play pipes that are normally only played by the higher or the lower uh, ma uh, keyboard manuals. And then on top of that, there's this polyphony, there's this problem of the reverberation because the the sound doesn't stop when you take your fingers off the, uh, the keys because you've got the reverberation in the building still carrying on. So there's a little calculation here which illustrates how very, very easily you can end up playing thousands of pipes simultaneously. Each one of those has got to be managed by your computer system which of course we'll get onto later, but it illustrates how you need a really e efficient and powerful computer to run a big organ on Halpert. You can run a small organ even from your laptop, but for a big organ, you need a big computer. Okay, what do you need to get started? You need a Halpert computer, and I explain the basics of what you would need to make that run. You need some keyboards, and you can buy cheap keyboards if you want and connect them up, they will work. Uh, you need Ideally, a pedal board. Um, you might need some decent sound, you know, even just two studio monitors that might cost you together a couple of hundred pounds will make an enormous difference to the sound. But you can play through headphones. You can start really small if you like. You'll need, ideally, some kind of control uh, to pull the stops and to operate the couplers and so on. And you can use this thing, which is called an Ovation Launchpad. And you can use a touch screen. It will work perfectly well with a touch screen. And here's an illustration of a kind of pedal system which will allow you to have a swell and a crescendo pedal as well as foot pistons which enable you to automatically select a group of stops in just one operation. Instead of pulling 15 stops individually, you press one button with your foot and it pulls those stops for you automatically. Then we look at how you install Hauptwerk and how you start off with the St Anne's organ. Um, there's a, a, a small uh, t town in, um, near, near Birmingham in the West Midlands uh, in England uh, called Moseley. And there is an organ in a church there at St Anne's Church. Um, and uh, Martin died when he first started off with Hauptwerk. This was the organ that he chose to give people, to give people uh, with the software so they could get going straight away. And it's been re-recorded since. And it's a perfectly good very satisfactory organ and um, uh, I explain to you how to make sure all your MIDI devices are connected and working and make sure that they are working properly because this is a very common problem where people write in and they say you know I've got these keyboards but they won't work without work what's going wrong and they always will work if you just take take it calmly and do the right thing um, this it, it, these um, organs that work in Hauptwerk they, they uh, come in what we call photorealistic screen images. So that looks quite like the console of the actual St Anne's organ, although the uh, stop jams with the stops to pull have been made rather bigger because they'll work with a touch screen, so you can touch the screen and operate the stops. Then I explain a little bit about checking your MIDI output and setting up all the keyboards. We'll just go through that quite quickly and setting up the crescendo pedals and so on. Now, sooner or later, you'll decide that if you're really interested in Hauptwerk, you'll want to get together a proper computer system 
dedicated to help work. This is this chapter seven, improving your computer. And I do explain in enough detail for you to make the right decisions what your options are. And that's very important because there's a lot of debate on the Helpwork forum about uh, how to choose the best kind of computer. Uh, and then we look at how you can either buy or build a stack of keyboards. And I give you illustrations of what the keyboards look like when you take them out of their cases. They're called keybeds. Um, and then how you can uh, put them together. And this is my keyboard stack of three keyboard manuals made with wooden side cheeks here and supports underneath. Uh, and it works absolutely perfectly. That's what it looks like from the front. But you can get quality keyboards with um, ivory type finish and wood finish. Uh, and some of these are illustrated in the, uh, in the book. And I explain to you how you connect these into your computer uh, with MIDI encoders, as they're called, and where you can get MIDI encoders and so on and so forth. Then we look at the pedal board. Myself, I took a, got a pedal board out of a, a, a church in Loughborough, in, near the East Midlands in uh, the UK, in England here, uh, and uh, it only cost me £4.99 um, because the church was being um, deconsecrated and uh, was no longer going to be used as a church. So I took my, my pedal board out of that and I completely reconditioned it. But I do give you here all the necessary dimensions that will enable you to build your own pedal board if you want to. All the parts that you need are all very carefully explained. That's my pedal board after I'd stripped it down, sanded it, and it's ready for varnishing in that picture. Um, now the pedal board, like the, uh, the keyboards, works with MIDI. And I go into detail as to how you can set up an old keyboard, mine was 125 years old, that you could take out of a church, how you can make it work with MIDI. I know it seems, for new people who come to help work, it seems very intimidating, but believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Right, okay. Now, um, then we look at audio. Now, audio is absolutely crucial in Houtwerk. It's absolutely crucial uh, because um, audio, the whole thing, it's it, you, an ordinary hi-fi system will never do justice to a pipe organ because a pedal organ, the pedal pipes are so big that they go down to under 10 hertz which no hi-fi system is capable of reproducing that kind of low level of, of pitch. And, it, it, and, uh, and 16 hertz, for example, is very, very common even in parish church organs. I play two parish church organs and they both got um, uh, uh, pipes which are capable of, of uh, uh, in, in the bottom of the range, going down below what a hi-fi system can reproduce. So audio is really important. So I explain your options. And if you can go for multi-channel audio, then you can get the kind of sound stage that you get from a real pipe organ. Um, because Halpwerk will support up to, I think it's up to 512 audio channels. Not that you'll ever find space in your house for 512 channels, but it's very easy to set up eight channels. Very easy indeed, and it's worth doing. So uh, we go through all that. And of course, these pedal pipes that are there, they need a subwoofer. So there's a subwoofer which is capable of, of, of responding to the kind of um, uh, frequencies that your pipe organ will generate. And I explained to you how to set up what are called audio groups. And then what you can do is you can take a rank of pipes from a pipe organ, like an eight foot diapason stock, and you can direct all those pipes to one particular audio group. So they can have a speaker system to themselves. And so can another and another of the different ranks that you've got. Um, so you can spread the audio load across a nice wide sound stage, which is how it works in a real pipe organ, of course. Um, and then I explain about reverberation and how you can add reverberation if you want to. The reason why this is important is because most of the cinema and theatre organs that have been produced are actually um, uh, recorded dry with no reverberation. Now, uh, an organ needs reverberation, 
Uh, and if you're playing it in a large building, that's fine. It wouldn't matter. In fact, it should be dry if you're playing it in a, in a large building so that the building can add its own acoustic. But if you're playing a dry sample set at home, such as comes with a cinema organ, you would feel the need for a little bit of reverberation to give a bit of body uh, and response to the sound. So you can add reverberation either using what we call convolution reverb, which I won't bore you with how it works because it's all in the book, or you can add reverberation uh, devices, external reverberation hardware to your uh, virtual pipe organ. Then I actually explain to you how you can construct a console and I give you all the key dimensions because it's no good building a console if it's different from the standard dimensions because if you then go and play a pipe organ, a real pipe organ, and you've got used to everything being in the wrong place, then when you go and play a real pipe organ, you'll be confused. And equally, if you invite some organist to come in and play your virtual pipe organ, he or she will sit there and they'll say, oh, you know, this is too high, that's too low, that's in the wrong place, that's too far back, that's too far to the left, too far to the right. So these are um, the English um, dimensions, uh, which actually form the basis of the American uh, dimensions as well, although they won't admit to that, but they do, because uh, in 1903 they adopted the uh, the dimensions of the English organs. Um, this is my virtual pipe organ, although I've got two launch pads here which are not shown in this picture. Um, then I give you the dimensions, and you there's two different types of console that you can build from this book. Uh, one has what we call stop jams, where the stops can be mounted, and the other doesn't have stop jams because you can put the stops onto monitor stands, and it's all explained in the book. So we start with a frame that forms the base, and then we start with some a side frame. Uh, we need two of those, one on each side, and then uh, we we start. Then we look at the front, and then we look at the platform where the keyboards will be mounted, uh, and. Um, uh, finally, when we get there, this is a view from above. These are our keyboard manuals and our pedal board, and these are where our stop our stop jam device will fit. And um, we have a niche into which we can fit the crescendo and the um, the swell pedal, and that's there. That's the real thing. This is a, a, a drawn illustration, and this is it from the side. And the beauty of this console design is there are no wires visible, no wires visible at all. Um, the computer is, is behind this right-handed door, which will open, um, so it's hidden completely. Um, and uh, there's a music desk there. And this is what the console looks like from the front without stop jams. Uh, and this is what the console looks like from the front with stop jams. And we haven't fixed the launch pads or a... Or a um, uh, a touchscreen monitor to those but that's what you put on there and this is how you mount the computer it this is the, the left hand the right hand door is there and uh, this also pulls down and if you pull this down this is what you see you see the computer and you see the interface cards to connect your keyboards to the computer for MIDI you see the interface card to connect your pedal board to MIDI and you see a MIDI hub which is how you can bring all the wires together to connect into the PC. So there you are. We look at then uh, how to configure the, uh, the organ and a few other little details. Um, and then we look at how, one of the, how you can use one of the beautiful kind of facilities in Houtwerk is that you can record your performances in audio and you can record them in MIDI. And when you record them in MIDI, it also records all the movements of all the stops and the pedals so and, and the manuals so you can see yourself playing. Um, and, and as I say, as well as being able to record very high quality audio. So there's a chapter on explaining how to do that. Then uh, one of the things about the advanced version about, of Houtwerk is that you can actually voice a pipe like an organ pipe voicer in real life. Well, not quite like a real life voicer does it, but you can adjust the timbre of the pipe and the volume and the pitch and the way in which it starts, what's called the shift or chiff as the pipe begins to speak. Um, so you can actually tweak the tuning of a pipe because a lot of pipe organs, are, unfortunately, are not very well maintained and they get out of tune very easily. Well, you can make sure if there's a few pipes out of tune in your sample set, you can tune them and you can just 
the response of the different groups of pipes to your room to suit your room so that it sounds properly uh, attuned to your room. And uh, these are some of the screenshots of how you do it. Um, so that's voicing the organ for you. And then finally, we go on to looking at the tu organ tuning and instrument tuning in general, because you'll come across this when you get into Hauptwerk. You'll realise, you know, that the A, international standard tuning, is 440 hertz. But because organs, the organs that are available from Hauptwerk span from the 15th century right up to 21st century, and they did not use the same tuning standard in uh, the 15th century uh, as we do today. Uh, so you'll come across this, that some organs have a different tuning standard. And as well as that, there's what's called the temperament of the organ, which is how you divide the 12 notes in the octave. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B and C. Those 12 notes are all pitched relative to one another. And how you pitch them relative to one another affects the way the, the, the notes play together and their consonants or their dissonance. Well, that is a subject unto its own, but it does affect organists because some organs are tuned to different temperaments uh, from others. But the thing about Hauptwerk is, because it is it purely manages these audio recordings, you can re-set um, uh, a, a temperament of an organ to a different temperament. Uh, and it does alter the sound uh, very, very uh, uh, significantly. And it's good to experiment over it. So there we are. We've come to the main end of the book now. This is um, a block schematic of um, a Hauptwerk organ. And uh, then we have a, a, quite a, a good glossary of terms. I mean, the terms are explained in the book, but it's quite nice to be able to look through a glossary of all the words and terms that you come across. And the book uh, then goes on, I create, produce on my publishing site, I produce these overlays, as they're called, which can be used with Novation launch pads to um, enable you to identify the stops and to use each individual button for a particular stop on the organ. And I have a whole set of these that are available on my Lulu website. Well, um, that's, that's what the book is all about. And I've done all this without explaining to you how you can get the book. The book is available from um, online from uh, web, the website, which is appearing on the screen at the moment, http colon stroke stroke or slash if you're in America, um, uh, lulu, that's l-u-l-u dot com, then forward stroke k-a spencer. That's where you can get the book, but you can also get it from retail booksellers uh, and from Amazon. Uh, may I thank you very much for watching the video. I do hope that you find the video, all the videos and the book uh, very useful. And I hope that if you really are interested in how that, you, that you'll pluck up the courage and actually decide to get going and get your own system. So many thanks indeed. Bye.